Hello and welcome. I am Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll see how to verify the DNC configuration through command line interface in Avaya Proactive Contact. On my screen, I have some configuration files for the do not call feature. When troubleshooting a DNC issue, the ones highlighted in yellow are the ones which you would need to investigate for their correctness. The others are default configuration files and you would rarely need to look at them. We will see the important configurations, how they should be, how they work, and we will also see a short demo of how the DNC is used from the agent application and from the supervisor menu. As you can see, I have logged into the system as an admin user. And the first file that we will look at is the master.cfg. We'll look for the do not call parameter. You can see that it is set to yes, which means the feature is active. The next file that we'll look at would be the .dnld file, which is the list configuration. In our demo, we'll take list 10 as the example. So I'll first go into the lists directory. I'll cd into list10.app. If I do ls-l here, you'll see the .dnld file here. I'll do a cat on it. And in the prep section, you will see these two parameters, the index list and DNC index. These should be set to the field from your calling list, which is a unique identifier, for example, an account number. And what this would mean is that when the list download happens, it will read these parameters and create hash files based on the account number field. Let's see how that happens. So I will do a download for list 10. You can see 11 records processed. And after processing the records, you can see the two messages, hashing the calling list and hashing the calling list for do not call. So it would have created a regular hash file and a do not call hash file separately. Let's see where that is. If I go into the lists folder, and you can see I have these two new files created the .dnc hsh and the .hsh. So the .dnc hsh file will be used by the do not call process when it has to search for a particular record and mark a do not call on it. So when troubleshooting a do not call issue, you must make sure that the timestamp on these two files, the .dnc hsh and .hsh matches the time when the last download happened on the calling list. If for some reason the calling list is altered, let's say you run a ext data or a ext list on the calling list, the .dnc hsh and .hsh will be older than the calling list and due to that when the do not call process runs, it will not work correctly. Now along with the .dnld file, there is another place where these unique identifiers should be mentioned. That file is hash.cfg, let's see where that is. This file will contain all the list names along with their unique identifiers. So you can see the list 10 is set to account number, which is what we saw in the .dnld files. So this configuration must be consistent at both these places. If for some reason you are having to recreate the calling list, let's say you are having to run a ext data or a ext list on the calling list, which means you are actually bypassing the actual download process which would have created the hash files by default, you then actually need to run the command to create the hash files manually. The command to create the hash file manually is clhash space the list name. In our example, it's list 10 and space the field from the calling list, which is the unique identifier. In this example, it's account number. When I press enter, it says clhash successfully processed 11 records. This would have created the .hsh file. Similarly, for creating the .dnc hsh, which is the hash file used by the do not call process, you will have to run clhash iphone d space list 10 space account number. This is how you would create the hash files manually. So you must make sure that at any given time, these hash files are newer than the calling list creation time. Now let's check some configurations related to the job file. I'm in the job directory and I have grabbed the O keys and DNC group parameters from the out BND job. 
The O keys is set to AG underscore CMD1, which is the agent key file for the agent application. And the DNC group is set to new DNC. Let us look at the DNC group first. So I go into the config folder and do a cat on new DNC dot DNC. So I can see that in this group, there are three lists, list 10, list 13 and inbound one, which share the same ident field, which is the account number. So it is important to note that only those lists can be a part of one group, which are having the same unique identifier or the key field, which is the account number in this case. So if you mark a DNC on a particular record of a calling list based on the DNC group, it will also search that record in the other lists part of that group and mark DNC on them. For example, if an agent is working on the OutBND job in our example, and that job is using list 10, and if the agent marks a DNC on a record, the do not call process will check the DNC group associated with the OutBND job. And so it will search for the same record in list 13 and inbound one also, and mark DNC on them if the record is found. Now let's look at the other file, that is the agent key file. In our example, it is set to ag underscore cmd1. So still being in the config folder, I will do a vi on that file. The name of the file will be ag underscore cmd1.ky. And you can see that the do not call key is present here. And if you want the agent to have the ability to mark DNC on customer records while they are working on the job, this key should be present in your key file as shown. Now let's see how this feature would be used. I've logged in as an admin user and I will do a get field on list 10 to show me the account number and status flag values. I'll do the same for list 13 also. You can see the account number values and the status flag field is blank. So I will pick one of these account number values from here, which are appearing in list 10 and list 13 also. Then I'll go into the menu system. I'll choose option two for calling lists. Then option seven for do not call. Then it gives me the option to mark DNC with batch mode. I'll choose two and from the items, I will choose two as the DNC group. I'll say yes. And then it asks me to input the values for the account number field here or whatever the unique identifier is. I'll put one value here and maybe I'll copy one more from the above output. I'll paste that as well. Now you can do a control W to find out which key would mark them as DNC. So you can see control F there. I'll get out of this and then press control F here. And then it comes back to the menu. So the DNC has been marked for those two records. I'll come out of this menu now. Do a get field on list 10 again. And do the same for list 13. You can see the two records have been marked as do not call in both the lists because they were a part of the same do not call group. Let's look at the logs now. So in the account log, I will grep the DNC log and grep for found. Let me do a tail on it also. So you can see it shows me the messages where it was able to find the records in the list 10 and list 13 respectively. Let me also try and do a grep on the failed messages. So you can see it showed me a message that it was not able to find the inbound one list because this list is not present in the current system, but it was still a part of the DNC group. So for any list which is a part of the DNC group, but is not available in the dialer, you would see these kind of messages. And just to quickly show you how this works from an agent application, I have an agent logged in and he's on a call right now. And you can see this shortcut button on the agent application for do not call. And also in the work menu, you'll have this do not call option. 
I also have a account lock tailed and grabbed on the DNC log. So when I press the do not call button, you will see the messages in the account log similar to what we saw earlier when we did it from the menu. So here the do not call process would have checked the DNC group associated with this job and searched for this record on all the calling lists mentioned in that group. That concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, you may write to us at mentor at or at Avaya Mentor on Twitter. Thank you for choosing Avaya.